So good were her images that they were actually included in what is commonly regarded as the first ever proper chemistry textbook. Hey, everybody. Professor Davis here from ChemSurvival.com and the YouTube channel ChemSurvival. Uh, it is time for another Table Tuesday video. It is the month of March. It's Women's History Month. So I thought, you know what, all this month, I'm going to post a few profiles of some of the female chemists who I think made the greatest impact on the periodic table. And what better place to start than right at the beginning? Let's ask that question. Who was the very first female chemist? Now, I know this is a tough question to answer for a couple of reasons, um, not the least of which is it's hard to pinpoint exactly when chemistry started and alchemy wound down. Uh, now, although that's true, it's um, generally accepted that this was the late 1700s is the time frame when that was going on. Uh, this was the time frame during which scientists were coming to the realization that the classical elements, earth, air, water, and fire were not elemental substances themselves. And that started to open the gates to the discovery of true elements, which ultimately, of course, led to the development of the periodic table. Now, the gentleman who is most often cited as the father of modern chemistry would, of course, be Antoine Lavoisier. Most of us have probably heard of him. And Antoine Lavoisier uh, is given this credit because he helped to, to come to that realization uh, initially that air is not an element. But there was another scientist working alongside him who contributed nearly as much, if not more, in certain ways to this effort to truly, genuinely understand what an element is and what the elements around us actually are. And that person was none other than his wife, uh, Mary Ann Pauls, sometimes known as Madame Lavoisier. So let's take a look at Marie Ann Pauls because her contributions to this, to this birth of the modern science of chemistry are actually quite remarkable. So how did Mary Ann Pauls contribute to setting the stage for elemental discovery? So the key to setting off this, this string of discoveries of elements that took place in the late 1700s and in the 19th century was to, to get over this idea of phlogiston theory. And phlogiston theory was, was a scientific theory that stated that heat is a substance, that it is either absorbed or released from elements when they are burned, or other materials, I should say, when they're burned. And there were quite a few prominent scientists in that day who believed this theory was correct. Some really famous names, like Joseph Priestley, Henry Cavendish, and Richard Kerwin, all thought that phlogiston theory was correct, and they all published scientific papers that advocated for this idea. Now, in these papers, they generally used air, right, as their sampling method. They would look for samples that they could get from air that either would or would not burn. And they referred to these samples of air as either phlogisticated or dephlogisticated air. So we now know that that's not the case. But how could someone prove that this is the case? Well, that's where Lavoisier and his contemporaries came in. Lavoisier and a small group of scientists in France tried to rebut these ideas that Cavendish and Kerwin and Priestley were putting forward. But you can't do that unless you can read their papers. And it turns out that Mary Ann Pauls was uh, actually quite well versed in several languages and was able, after a little bit of scientific training, to provide good sound technical translations of these papers so that Lavoisier and his contemporaries could offer their rebuttals. And this, of course, ultimately led to the abandonment of phlogiston theory and the acceptance of the facts that phlogisticated and dephlogisticated air are actually the elements hydrogen and oxygen. But Pauls did even more than that. She was also a very talented artist and often would be seen sketching out what was going on in the lab with her husband, uh, making drawings of not only the experiments he was conducting, but the equipment that he used as well, even sometimes including herself in those sketches. So good were her images that they were actually included in what is commonly regarded as the first ever proper chemistry textbook, authored, of course, by Antoine Lavoisier and uncredited illustrations by Marianne Pauls. So this extremely talented woman, she was a real Renaissance woman, spoke several languages, talented artist, understood the science of chemistry, was an invaluable asset to her husband in his endeavors to finally get our heads wrapped around what is an element? What are the elements? Right? And that ultimately led to the discussion of how do we organize them and led to what we now see today as the modern periodic table. 
And so I humbly submit that in my opinion, the first female chemist worked right alongside the first male chemist, Madame Lavoisier, Marianne Pauls. Not only did she contribute an immense amount to our understanding of some of the simpler elements like hydrogen and oxygen, but she helped to set us on the course to identify and arrange all of the elements on the periodic table. So what do you think about my idea? Is Madame Lavoisier worthy of the title first female chemist? And if not, well, then who is? I'd like to hear from you in the comments below. Let me know uh, and I will chase down every lead that you can give me. I really enjoy, as you can tell, reading about the history of chemistry and sciences. I hope you do too. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, keep your eye out for more Table Tuesdays coming forward this month with even more really amazing female chemists who helped us shape the periodic table. Uh, I'm Professor Davis, everybody, from ChemSurvival.com, YouTube channel, ChemSurvival. See you next time.